This is NIO AFM tutorial number 7, Acquiring and Processing Force Curves. Remember that before you start the lab, you have to take a quiz, and if you fail it, you have to take a second, harder one, so please come prepared. The goals of this lab are for you to learn how to acquire and process force distance curves, to observe differences in the force curves depending on the cantilever, to learn how to obtain dynamic mode and phase images and to estimate friction coefficient and tip sample interaction based on your results. For this lab you will be using a graphite sample. Before imaging and measurements you have to exfoliate the surface of the sample. To do this you attach tape and peel it off. This will uncover a fresh graphite surface. Start with a weak cantilever. For this purpose, use the HQCSC17. In the imaging wizard, set the feature size and feature height to 1 micrometer and 1 nanometer respectively. Set the scan speed to high and obtain a constant force contact mode image. After you're done with imaging, go to the spectroscopy window, click load to bring in the image you just obtained, Set the scan to deflection spec forward and backward and the filter to raw data. Input the values of start offset and range at negative 1000 nanometers and 1000 nanometers respectively. Set the position of the point over which you want to obtain the force curve and click start. If you don't see the whole force curve on your chart, click the right button and select full view. This will display the whole range of your data. Think about whether your force curve makes sense and whether you need to obtain a new set of data. After you're done with obtaining the force curve with the weak cantilever, use the stiff one. Switch to the HQ NSC16. Set the imaging mode to face contrast and obtain a frequency sweep should already know how to do this based on the previous lab. Verify that the resonant frequency of the cantilever is between 130 and 250 kilohertz. Also maintain the amplitude of the peak between 1 and 5 volts. You can do this by changing the excitation frequency. There are three imaging windows in phase contrast mode. Set these to z-axis amplitude and phase scan forward. Set the feature size, feature height and scan speed as before and obtain an image. Observe how the three images are different from one another and think of what information each one presents. Go back to spectroscopy and upload the image you obtained in phase contrast mode. Switch back to static mode and set the start offset and range as before and obtain a force curve. Your data will probably look like a horizontal line or just noise so you have to gradually lower the range and probably the offset as well. Look for adhesion and attraction so that you know that you have obtained good data. You need to save your force curve data in order to process it later. To do this, save the force curve NID file from the image gallery onto your storage. Then open the file from your storage. Go to File, Export, Export Current Chart. Select XYZ points and save it as .csv file, which you can later open with Excel and process it into a force distance curve. If you have enough time in your lab period, you can check at what range of Z-motion the photodiode gets saturated. To do this, change the range of the Z-motion and observe the voltage on the force curve until it gets saturated to about 10 volts. After that, you can image the surface and see whether you applied enough force to scratch it. You have to process your data in order to obtain any meaning from it. Raw data is presented as photodiode voltage as a function of the Z position of the scanner. 
you have to process it to obtain a force as a function of the sample tip separation or indentation. A spreadsheet will be provided where you have to fit your raw data and process it into a force position curve. The processing involves several steps, so learn and understand what each step is doing and what information each step is presenting. After this lab, you should be able to acquire and process force distance curves. You should also understand what data processing is doing. You should observe and understand the differences in the force curves depending on the cantilever and you should be able to obtain dynamic mode and phase contrast images.